Hello and welcome to our Virtual Doors Open Day 2020 and a look at St Mary's Chapel in the centre of Aberdeen. So where exactly is St Mary's Chapel? Well it's underneath the east end of the Kirk of St Nicholas. This is the northeast elevation of the church and is the view from School Hill. So let's have a wander down the path as we head towards the Marks and Spencer's end of the St Nicholas Centre. Let's go down the steps and see what awaits. So we're now going to go through the gate in these railings and through the black door in the centre of the photograph into St Mary's Chapel. St Mary's Chapel was originally built as a separate building around the middle of the 15th century with the intention that it would be used to support the church as it was extended eastwards over the valley of the Putahi Burn. It was built with a stone vaulted ceiling in such buildings where each rib of the vault reaches a pillar it is supported by a corbel which is keyed into the st stonework to give it strength. By the Middle Ages, carving the protruding stone of the corbel had become fairly popular, so it is not surprising that the corbels in St Mary's Chapel have carved decorations. By far the commonest carving in St Mary's is a stylized human face, but some of them are quite crude while others are more realistic. All of them are different. One suggestion is that each one may have been created by a different person. At the time that the chapel was being built, the ability to carve granite was still being developed, so some of the stonemasons may still have been learning their craft. One of the other corbels shows something traditionally known as the rat, because it was thought to depict a rat. Certainly when it was carved in the mid-15th century, rats would have been commonplace. Other suggestions are that the, the corbel is depicting an otter, and some other people have suggested a monkey. But a rat seems to be the firm favourite. And that leads us to a story that is illustrated by the corbel at the other side of the pillar. Here we see what is thought to be a figure of a church warden of the early 1400s. This man is supposed to have stolen the communion silver and hidden it in a sack and buried it in the ground. He left the sack with the communion silver and after a while he went back to get his ill-gotten gains. There he found that a family of rats had made their nest inside the sack. So, so the figure shown in the corbel is of the body of the church warden holding a stick. You can see the two arms on the left to middle of the image and you can see his back and his strong legs in the right hand of the image. But it's a stick he's holding to poke at the rat's nest and get rid of the rats. So we find in this 15th century chapel a warning in stone for any would-be thief. This photograph taken in the 1960s 
shows St Mary's Chapel as it set out for worship. Notice the the chairs with the holders for the hymn books behind the, the backrest. And you can see the small organ, which is used for musical accompaniment for services of worship within the chapel. Behind the communion table, we can see the three panels of the window, which we will now discuss in more detail. In St Mary's Chapel, there is a beautiful window which has as its centrepiece the Pieta shown in this photograph. The image of Mary, the mother of Jesus, cradling the body of her son after his body was taken down from the cross. To the left of the centrepiece, the Pieta, is another of the scenes from the early life of Jesus. This shows Mary and the infant Jesus with Simeon. And to the right of the centrepiece, we find a later event in Jesus' story. This was when he was 12 years old and the family went up to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And on the journey back, Mary and Joseph found that Jesus wasn't there and they went back to Jerusalem to find him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who had heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. Let us turn our attention now to the font found in St Mary's Chapel. This was made as part of the reordering of the chapel in 1898. The octagonal stone structure stands in the north aisle. It was erected in memory of the children of Robert Spottiswood Facher, Spottiswood of Muresk, and was dedicated on the 1st of October 1898. Around the top of the font are eight metal panels, four of which feature enamel symbols related to baptism. These were created by the distinguished Aberdeen enamelist James Cromer Watt. This enamel panel shows the symbol of the Holy Spirit as a dove which came to Jesus at his baptism. Here we see stylized Greek letters, Iota, Eta and Sigma, I-H-S, which are the Greek first three letters of the word Jesus. And in this enamel circle, we see a cross with the Greek letters Alpha and Omega, A-W, the first and the last. And in this fourth roundel, we see the combined Greek letters Chi and Rho, C and R, which are the first two letters of Christ when written in Greek. While we look at some of the carved wooden panels found in St Mary's Chapel, let me tell you a little bit more about the enamelist James Cromer Watt. He was born in Aberdeen on the 14th of July 1862. He went to Aberdeen Grammar School and then qualified as an architect. However, through a number of study tours, he gradually moved into working in art and sculpture, especially using metal and enamel. His style embraced the arts and crafts movement and was influenced by people such as Phoebe Traquair and fellow Aberdonian Douglas Strachan. He lived as a bachelor at 71 D Street, where there is a plaque to him. He died in an accident on the 19th of November, 1940. So how is enamel made? What you do is fuse 
powdered glass to a metal substrate at temperatures between 750 and 850 degrees centigrade. The glass melts, flows and then hardens to a smooth, durable, vitreous coating of the metal. So let us turn our attention to a small metal ring that is found embedded in the stonework in St Mary's. At the end of the 16th century there was great concern about the presence of witches in society. Aberdeen was also caught up in this hysteria and the first witch was arrested in 1596. John Gordon, sometimes known as Williamson, was imprisoned in the vault of St Nicholas Kirk on the charge of being a manifest and open witch. After the Reformation in 1560, the worship of Mary was no longer considered a suitable part of the new church practice. Thus, this part of the building became redundant and other uses were found for it. This included being a prison for witches. The records about the witches were extensive with full details of each trial and any subsequent execution. To assist with their imprisonment, an iron ring together with appropriate shackles was purchased, fitted into the wall of St Mary's Chapel and used to chain the witches. The cost for this is written in the city archives. Thanks are given to Martin Hall of the City Archives of Aberdeen for some of the detailed information and the photograph of part of the records. So I hope you have enjoyed our tour around St Mary's Chapel on Virtual Doors Open Day. Of course, to maintain St Mary's Chapel, keep it wind and water tight and in good order requires lots of money. And the Open Space Trust also wishes to redevelop the east end of the Kirk of St Nicholas. So if you would like, please visit our Open Space Trust website where you can find out more about our plans and additionally have the opportunity to make a donation to the Open Space Trust.